Hello, yesterday in class, we started this process of working with our um, animal photo and our monochromatic color palette by choosing a color. And we talked about color, finding your colors spot on the value scale. So if I'm using one of the lighter colors, I'm gonna start down here because I get more opportunity to darken it. If I'm using a darker color, like purple or the dark brown, I'm gonna start down here because it's less about darkening and more about making the color lighter. Um, I'm using the burnt sienna, and so it is kind of here in the middle. And so yesterday we talked about um, like kind of value mapping, using the photo of the sphere and then practicing so that we can see what colors we make with our, um, paint color that we're choosing for our animal. Um, from there, you're going to transfer your animal photo using a piece of transfer paper, making sure that it goes darker side down. Also making sure that you're using the canvas sheet on the, not on the vanilla ice creamy side, that is just raw canvas, but instead on the white side that's been primed. So I'm gonna put my transfer paper down first and then I'm going to put my photograph over the top. I'm going to trace everything that I need. Um, so you can see when I say everything that I need, um, I have traced where values change in a dramatic way. I have indicated the direction that my brush strokes will need to go for the feathers. Um, but I haven't traced like all of these little dots, those little dots, um, some of the speckles on the feathers, those are things that I'm just going to add in as I paint. Uh, I'm more concerned about where, where things are darker, where things are lighter and kind of the direction of the feather growth, because I'm going to need to pay attention to that as I paint, uh, so that my animal feels like my animal. So today what I'm gonna do, I have my photo traced and I have my practice and my photograph right here. Um, I'm always going to keep those close by. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, painting, my canvas, and I'm gonna tape it to a board. Taping that canvas to a board um, it's, it is a piece of fabric, so you can see as soon as I pick it up, it's going to flop. Um, it's going to be hard for me to carry this around the classroom. And so I do want to make sure that I get this taped, um, taped down. I kind of like to tape them so that I can see my photo right next door. So I'm going to tape this um, kind of to the side and we're not using water because it is acrylic paint so um it won't be as crucial as it was when we were working with watercolor that i tape all the way around because this is a piece the canvas isn't going to buckle the way a piece of watercolor paper would so even if i can paint or tape um see i can tape two sides here and then I am just gonna go ahead and tape so that my reference photo is just right here all the time. I don't wanna lose that photo. Um, I wanna make sure that it stays with my painting. I wanna make sure that I'm looking at it when I'm painting. And so I'm gonna tape it right on the board right next to my painting. Next thing I have to do is I am thinking about my uh, practice sphere here, and I'm kind of looking at the tones that I made with that sphere, and I'm looking at my photograph. I have to paint a background. Now, you might have objects or things in your background. You do not have to paint those. You do want to pick kind of a contrasting color. If I look at my sphere, where, where my sphere is light, my background is dark. 
where my sphere is dark, my background is light. And I want that kind of same effect for my animal so that I get good contrast and I don't just lose this into the background space. So I get to decide where my background is dark and where my background is light. And I'm just going to use sort of some brush strokes. So to kind of um, make the paint blend a little bit. So this outer edge of my owl is fairly light for the most part. Um, this is probably the lightest portion. So I, I kind of want my paint to be a little bit darker back there. Um, just for the purposes of contrast. So I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to mix it with some little bit of black and I'm going to just outline or not outline really put some brush strokes here using that really dark paint. With this is our first shift to canvas. And so you're going to notice that you need to use a little bit more paint uh, than you needed to when we were on the paper. So I had some black and now I'm just adding in some of the brown. Um, and I'm just going to blend this out. Out from the edge of my animal. Just sort of softly blending those colors together. Got a little bit more white on my paintbrush than I was expecting. Kind of lightened it up a little bit more than maybe I was hoping for. And I'm just sort of making sure that it looks like my background is going to give me, like I said, good contrast. I don't want it to, my animal to be lost um, in this background. But you can see, I'm not worried about, I'm just using my paint, I'm using my paintbrush um, to just create kind of an interesting texture. So my paintbrush strokes can go in all kind of scattered directions like I'm doing right now with mine. They can go all in the same direction. Um, that is sort of up to your own personal interpretation of how your background should look. Now, the back of their, this owl's head gets a little lighter or a little darker as we go this way. So I want to use a little less of the black and a little bit more of my color. But I am kind of liking this foggy gray effect that I got over here by adding what I thought was a little bit too much white. So I'm going to go ahead and add white. So you'll notice that for this process, I'm not mixing any paint in my on my palette. I'm just going ahead and I'm mixing the paint and I'm changing it as I work here inside my painting. And that is the fastest way to make this happen is that you're going to just kind of mix and blend your paint out here on your painting instead of like fussing with it on your palette. And you'll find that we do that quite a bit. The overall effect, like I said, is mostly for just sort of contrast with where I know my animal is going to be. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the backdrop when you guys have school photos, right? That it's got just kind of the moshy color. And that's sort of the effect that I'm working for. As I move this way, the backside of my owl gets a little darker. So just like with my practice from yesterday, I'm going to go ahead and have my background get a little lighter over here. Just so my animal really stands out on my background. I do not want it to get lost. I do not want to paint the background the same color I'm going to need for my creature, for my animal. Otherwise, everything just sort of gets lost. We'll end up with kind of just a muddied, a muddied um, mess. And I don't want that. I'm going to try to avoid that philosophy. Too much of the black paint down here. I'm 
just kind of painting that out. Gonna add some white. So this is first steps, obviously. After you're done transferring, you're gonna decide if your background needs to be darker or lighter or some blend of both. And you're going to paint your background using uh, some sort of brush, uh, brush marks for visual interest in your background space. So you can see I'm about done here and going to be ready to begin my painting. So that's your job today is to paint your background.